Just last week I was in Atlanta, Georgia for the Swordman Demo Days event and I'm working on editing that video so I hope that that will be out soon. The event was hosted by Lee who owns a business called Real Rollers and he also happens to be the exclusive Swordman dealer in the US right now. I had a great time hanging out with him and Michael also from Swordman and you'll see all that in the video. So I got a chance to sit down with Lee and talk to him a little bit about his business, how he got involved with kind of the homeowner side of real mowers like California trimmers, True Cuts, McLean's. And he actually sells this roller for the front of those mowers that usually come with wheels on the front. So if you have one of those mowers and you're interested in learning more about the roller I think you'll enjoy this conversation. There's a link also in the description down there if you want to find out more about it at his website. Also, he is the exclusive Swordman dealer, so right now in the U.S., if you order a Swordman mower anywhere in the U.S., it's pretty much going to be coming through him. And so we got to talk a little bit about Swordman and kind of how he got involved with that whole side of things as well. Unfortunately, I messed up here and I thought I was recording video on my GoPro during our conversation, but I did not actually record the video. So if you want to continue on here listening just to the conversation, it's just going to be audio from here on out. I know some of you like to just set your phone down while you're doing something and listen to the audio, so no worries there. If not, it's also on all the major platforms, Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. I hope you enjoy our conversation there and be looking for a video as well from the whole weekend and kind of what I was up to in Atlanta. Thanks for watching and listening. All right, so I'm here with Lee from Real Rollers today. I've spent the weekend here with him and uh, kind of hung out at a shop a little bit, kind of just hung out in general. It's been pretty fun. And we had our Swordman demo day yesterday. So today I wanted to talk to him a little bit about kind of first what is Real Rollers so you guys understand what it is. And then we'll talk about Swordman. We'll talk about maybe a little bit of your backstory how you got into all this kind of stuff. So let's just start off with what is Real Rollers and kind of give people an idea of what that is so they understand it. Yeah, sure. Uh, we've had a good time these last we have. four days. Uh, Michael from Swordman's been in town. So uh, me, Ryan, and Michael have had a, a good time with the demo day and appreciate you coming in from Des Moines. Yeah, no problem. It's so, been yeah. awesome. So uh, yeah, Real Rollers. Um, Real Rollers started off as simply a company that had created front rollers for trimmers and true cut and McLean real mowers that kind of replaced the front grocery cart wheels. Mm -hmm. And over time through demand from customers and speaking to folks all over the country, um, we found that there was a big niche for folks looking for another new, uh, residential real mower. And that's kind of how we got hooked up with Sorbman and Michael, mm -hmm. um, over there. So it's kind of evolved into hopefully a one-stop shop for folks really passionate about, the tools they use to mow their yard, especially mm -hmm. real mowers specifically. Yeah. And I think from what I didn't know about just from my area was I never really saw real mowers in a residential setting at all. So that was one. But then two was like, I, I kind of found out about your product and how the real kind of work down here was that most of them were built with the wheels. So then you run into a lot of problems with if you don't have your yard really level, there's going to be a lot of scalping. And so just in my kind of thought there, it's like, the roller is really an essential piece of it looking good over time. And it does. It makes a big difference because originally people would think, well, it makes the stripe, and mm -hmm. that's all it does. Right. Um, but when you really look at the engineering behind it and what it truly does, mm -hmm. the stripe is an after effect that aesthetically looks nice. Yep. But what it does is it keeps that bed knife on an uneven yard from nailing the dirt and soil, which ultimately dulls your blade. Yep. Costs you more money or um, you know, gives you that ugly look where it's so pretty and green and then boom. You yep. have a brown spot. So uh, it was an ingenious idea by Real Works, and we just try to take it to the next level and try to get it across to all the people. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about Real Works then, because that's kind of how <laughs> you got into the actual product and found out about it, and then you just kind of took it to a different level. So let's talk a little bit about the Real Works thing. Yeah, so uh, we're Real Rollers. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about that, but Real Works is a huge uh, lawn, real mower service shop in Brazelton, Georgia, which is just town away from us. Mm -hmm. um, it's founded and started by a guy named Steve Anderson um, and his son-in-law, Anthony, and him have been running the shop for, whew, at least Anthony's been involved for 10 or 15 years. And uh, I came across those guys just as a regular residential real mower owner. Mm -hmm. um, I had a McLean 20 inch, I think it was made in 1984, was my first real mower. <laughs> yep. I bought it on Craigslist for about 30, about, I'm sorry, about $300. Um, and it had those two front wheels on it. And the Biggest real mower shop was Real Works, and I took it to those guys. Mm -hmm. And they did a bang up job. They would pick up my real mower, sharpen and grind it, and then they deliver it right back to them. And 
So that's when I first met him as just a customer of theirs that was looking to get my real mower sharpened up. Right. Grinded. So you just kind of went in there and then you kind of found that they had this this roller thing and they weren't really, were they selling it at the time just kind of through their shop or it was just, they just weren't really pushing it is, is the thing, right? Yeah, so they, um, they service real mowers over three states, Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina, mm-hmm. about 3,000 mowers a year. And they were only selling these rollers to customers that came into their shop. They weren't reaching out, advertising. Um, they were doing nothing online, nothing with direct mailers. So, um, you know, when I bought my McLean real mower, all my friends had a roller on the front and I went online immediately to try to buy a front roller and I couldn't find it anywhere. Right. Um, so I went back to my friends and said, Hey, you know, where did you get this front roller? It's, it's awesome. You guys love it. You would never do anything different. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said, well, there's a guy in Brazelton where you got your real mower serviced He's the only one that has them. I think he invented them. So that's kind of where I followed that path and uh, hooked up with Steve asking him more about it. Okay. So was he at all kind of hesitant at that at first or how did he react to it? Yeah, I think you've met Steve. He's quite a character. He is, yeah. Um, So yeah, he can can do his own show sometimes as well. Uh Just let him rip. But uh, no, you know, when I went in there and asked him, you know, how he was selling his rollers, uh, he was pretty blunt about it. And he said, well, if, if they want it, they'll find me. And I was kind of amazed that that was his approach. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you know Steve, that's, that's his approach. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I spoke with him a little bit and said, hey, have you ever thought about putting these online? And this is, you know, this is 2011, not 1992. Right. Um, when we're talking about putting things on the World Wide Web. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had no interest. And I said, well, you know, you know, this is a brilliant idea. I love your product. Anybody that puts this on their mower never takes it off the front roller. Yeah. So why don't we look to put this, you know, I'll build you a website just for fun. And let's see if we can let people know about this product and sell them worldwide because they're or worldwide, US-wide, because they're easy to put on. And uh, he agreed. He said, you know, I think he was just trying to get me out of his shop. <laughs> and this was, again, just for fun, for me, a hobby. Um, and he said, you know, I'll give you a chance. And uh, that's where he started. And I think that first year he sold maybe 80, 60 or 80 rollers in his shop. And the first year on the web, it was, you know, 600, 700 plus. Wow. So it, it took off and now it's really taken off, you know, seven years later. Yeah. So he was at the event yesterday and I, I asked him a little bit about it and he was like, man, this guy came in. I'm not going to try to do my Southern accent, but <laughs> Steve has a great Southern accent, but he was like, he just kept hounding me. He's got this, you know, he came in with this voice. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? You know? And he said, uh, finally, you just kept kind of after him and after him and he's like, Anthony, we need to get rid of this guy somehow. So yeah, that's kind of how it happened. But it's kind of a cool story. I I would love to someday get Steve on a podcast like we talked about a little bit yesterday because he has a lot of stories and he's just a character. So I, I think we could. If, if you don't make it back out here in the short term, I'm sure we could uh, get him online and do a little FaceTime and that would almost be yeah. entertaining as well with it this would whole be. crew. It would be for sure. Let's go into a little bit. Um, I told you right before I was holding back on asking you any questions really about your story because that's what my podcast is about. It's kind of about people's stories and how they get got into lawn care or whatever they're doing. And so you told me a little bit about when you were a kid kind of moving around and stuff. But so you were born in Florida, you said, then just did a bunch of moving as a kid. Yeah. So, um, so I was born in, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida. I think okay. we have some commonalities with yeah, yeah. the person you've YouTube before and interviewed um, and done a podcast with. But I was born in uh, Clearwater, Florida, outside of St. Petersburg, and uh, we moved up and down the East Coast. So uh, I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina, then we moved up to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and then even further north, as far as north as you can get, Rochester, New York, uh-huh. um, and then went back to, uh, to school in Mississippi, actually, in University okay. of Mississippi, so I'm an old Miss Rebel, yep. and uh, went there because my parents went there, my brother went there, and my wife went there, and it seems like everybody I know went to Old Miss, so that's kind of what you did. Mm-hmm. Um, so graduated from there, and then uh, moved to the biggest city that could get me a job, and that was Atlanta. Yep. So came out here, and uh, we've been here ever since, and love every bit of it. Okay. So you did spend some time up north, too, a little bit, like saw some mm-hmm. of those seasons and stuff. How did you uh, react to all that cold and all that? You know, I, I, I love being having four seasons. Um, here in Atlanta, we don't really get a full four. Mm-hmm. Um, in Florida, you certainly don't get a full four. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, loved all four seasons, but, you know, you get up in Rochester, New York, it's either beautiful for two months or it's gray for 10 months. Yeah. And after a while, that can wear you down. Yep. Um, it's refreshing to kind of get back uh, to the south and have eight months of sun 
Yeah. Versus eight months of gray. I know all about that. <laughs> yes. it's, it gets pretty tough during our winter season for sure. And so after you moved to Atlanta, um, how did you kind of, I think you just talked a little, about it a little bit, but how'd you kind of get into real mowing? Were you, what was your yard when you first like maybe bought a house sure. or something like that? So, you know, traditionally growing up in the Northeast, which was the majority of my time, it was fescue. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much what you had. Um, and I was introduced to uh, Bermuda at first, when I first bought my first home. So uh, it was sad. I had fescue, but my neighbor had Bermuda. So um, I met, he was up here yesterday for the demo event, uh -huh. a guy named Keith, and he had a big old lock mower. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Loud, big, heavy. Mm -hmm. um, had about a, you know, Petty probably had 10,000 square feet of Bermuda, and he would mow it every three days. He worked night shift. So when I would be at home working in my office, I would look out the window, and he would be out there just making that yard beautiful. And I had fescue. So every winter I was overseeding and just trying to fill in gaps. Yep. And it always admired how nice his yard would look. So uh, I lived in that house with the fescue for about six years. And then we moved to a home and I was convinced I'd find a place that had either Bermuda um, or Zoysia. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the house that we ended up moving to was only a mile away and it had Zoysia, uh, Empire Zoysia, which is more of a fatter blade mm -hmm. um, type of grass, more like a St. Augustine, but love it. Uh, and the moment we moved in, I fell in love with that yard and real mowing and getting after the yard. Yep. So you kind of went to, uh, that was pretty much typical for down here though, is like getting a residential type of real mower. Um, and then basically we kind of talked about, it's kind of like you don't tinker with it too much. It's kind of just goes to the shop, you use it, that type of deal. And that's, that was the thing is, um, either you had a rotary mower with fescue or a lot of people in Georgia, I would say the Atlanta area, more than you would think have real mowers, but they're all residential, what mm -hmm. we call residential real mowers. Um, it wasn't until I started to read more on TLF mm -hmm. that I saw that people actually own greens mowers um, for the residential use. That was it's just something unheard of around here. Right. Um, most people either own a True Cut, a Trimmer, or a McLean. Uh -huh. um, those are the three main real mowers. Mm -hmm. And I found you know, my experience with real rollers, this company that we run, speaking to people across the country, real mowers are popular where there's real mower service shops. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this area, in South Carolina and Alabama, uh, real mowers are much more common. Um, you'll see them in Texas and California, real common, because there's actual shops within their area right. where they can get them serviced. Right. So I think those two things go hand in hand, and that's something I'm learning as swordmen's come out, that, you know, you're limited to where you can get it serviced. Right. And to your point earlier... I would never mess with my mower. So, you know, I had a McLean and then I have a True Cut 27 was my last real mower outside of the Swordman. And if it got out of a line or started to cut poorly, yep. I would never dream of touching it. Mm -hmm. I just would call Real Works and say, hey, come pick up this mower because it was too heavy for me to pick up by myself. And yep. they would send a truck and load it up and send it back and I'd wait a couple weeks to get it. So mm -hmm. never even considered to tune one or uh, adjust one. That's kind of common here. Yeah, I think that's, really what the difference is for why I've never seen anything too up where I lived was it's just a little bit different in terms of maintaining our grass. I think it, it does better through heat a little higher, sure. but also the same thing goes there where I didn't have a clue where I would service something if I even wanted to. Wanted to it, yeah. So yeah, it was like until I found this Swordman thing and then I kind of understood that there's the way we can do the internet now and like, you know, shipping things back and forth and sending reels and, and doing all that stuff. So it's kind of cool. And I think that's a big part of, you know, I spoke to a gentleman yesterday, I was on Friday, I'm sorry, um, gentleman in Junction City, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we've been selling these rollers for 12 years across the country and we've only sold them in 14 states across the country. Mm -hmm. And you typically can probably predict which states those are, and it pretty much follows the, the, the southern part of the country in Hawaii. Yep. And you get California, a little northwest. But the point of that is, um, that's where the traditional real mowers for residential customers have been sold and used. Mm -hmm. And just in the first eight months using the Swordman, having the Swordman on the market, we're in 29 states. And I think that's a testament to the ability to have your reel mailed and serviced, yep. and you don't have to live right next to a real mower shop. And Exactly. I, I bring this up because a gentleman on Friday lived in Junction City, Kansas, which I never imagined I'd speak to anybody in Kansas about a real mower. Um, but he had a, he had a mower, uh, one of the, you know, a McLean is actually what he had, and he said he drove all the way to Oklahoma City once a year, which was, I think, a four-and-a-half-hour trip, one way, yep. just to have his mower sharpened. And I was just blown away that somebody would be that passionate to drive nine hours 
mm-hmm. in a day or over a couple of days to, yeah. Yeah. to get a mower service. So exactly. his interest is, it's opened my eyes. And I just think it's cool that this opens up real mowers to more people that are passionate. Mm-hmm. That's a cool part for me. And the thing about the Swardman thing too, that we can touch on a little bit is kind of the ease of how things are able to be serviced anyway with the design. Meaning like there's pretty simple pulley system, belt system, cables. And so if any of that really needs to be adjusted, most people could probably, any sort of shop, like mower shop, could probably handle how to fix it. So Absolutely. Yeah. Very intuitive. You know, their design, it made it really easy for the average person to just turn a bolt here and a screw here. And mm-hmm. it's, it's really smart. Honestly, that's what intrigued me. Yeah. Very smart. So let's talk a little bit about that, how you got involved with them and being essentially the only dealer in the U.S. right now. I mean, they're, they're kind of, people ask me, is it like a startup company? And I'm like, well, I don't know what, what you would call, <laughs> it, you call it exactly because they're a little bit, you know, more, they're a little farther along in Europe right now. But since they are trying to break into the U.S., um, how did you get involved with, with that? Yeah, I think, um, first off, I'm fortunate that, you know, Sorbonne came to the U.S. for all of us because mm-hmm. I really do think that it's going to change the way people are using real mowers and the number of people that can use a real mower. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I met, um, I met them about two years ago, Michael um, from Sorbonne. Mm-hmm. I was, came over here to the U.S. and was uh, attending, I think, the GIE Expo. That year and was trying to get Sorman's name out there. And he was looking for uh, some dealers that may be interested in selling their mowers or mm-hmm. help them find a places and service stations. Uh, ironically, um, at that time, you know, he had found Real Works, which we talked about the service shop. Mm-hmm. And me and Real Works were doing a lot of business together, obviously, as partners and some endeavors. And uh, Michael emailed me, and at first, I you know, I wasn't really interested. Um, I wasn't interested in selling lawnmowers, to be completely frank with you. I, mm-hmm. I loved the roller business, and I, I knew I was selling a product that fit a need, and, um, you know, it, it was just a really cool idea, and mm-hmm. people loved it. Love selling something that people love. Yeah. Um, and didn't want to really muddy the water. But uh, in speaking with Michael, um, you know, he spoke to me for a little bit, and at the end of the day, he left me a mower, and I wasn't interested. That's originally how it went. This wasn't interested because it was a big thing to take on. Yeah. Um, but the more I spoke with uh, Michael and the more I spoke with real works and we started to look at, you know, this mower fits a true need. Um, the more it excited me, but ultimately it wasn't until I went out in the yard and tried it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being kind of naive that I was, um, I was saying to myself, you know, I love these American made real mowers. I've got the best one out there for residential use, the true cut 27 with the Honda engine. It was big, loud, strong, mm-hmm. For a residential real mower, I didn't know you could get anything bigger or better. Um, so I was happy. Yep. Um, but what I didn't realize um, at the time was, you know, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I think that's kind of the cool part about my story is I never wanted to sell the mowers. I um, really just wanted to fill a niche for people that had the same passion that I had. Yeah. And when I went out there about two weeks after Michael left and left me the sword, and I still hadn't touched it, just sat in my garage. And I told my wife, hey, you know what? I'm going to go try this, you know, European bright colored, sleek little mower and it's quiet, which I don't care about being, being quiet or yeah, yeah. I, I was just, you know, let's go try this thing out. Mm-hmm. And, um, I started to mow with it and it dawned on me a couple things. One man, was I naive to not give Michael more time mm-hmm. while he was here. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't really interested in selling lawn mowers or bringing a foreign mower into the country at all. And two, it was kind of like the experience I had with a Blackberry. I was really holding back from wanting to move to an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, what's an app? I'm not interested in an iPhone. You know, I've got a keyboard on this thing. That doesn't have a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Felt great about my BlackBerry. Um, but when I went to the iPhone, I looked back and said, God, look at what I was missing. Mm-hmm. You don't sometimes realize what you were missing or what you don't know until you experience something different. Yep. And with the Swordman, it was the smoothness, the preciseness, the lightweight, which I thought was a disadvantage. But with that roller drum, it just glides Yep. around my flower beds. I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. So um, I agree. as soon as I touched it and mowed it side by side to what I've been used to, mm-hmm. I knew it was a complete game changer. Minus not even considering the cartridges and everything else that came with it, just the feel. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we did yesterday, that demo day. Yeah, um, that, was the, that was the cool thing. I think a lot of people got to see for sure side by side there with another mower. But you know, Matt was here, my friend, Matt Martin, which has been on the podcast before. So he, I have a little video that I'll have out of him trying it, but that was the first time he's ever seen it. And he was, he just kept telling me, I just can't believe how easy it is to use. It's lightweight. 
he's come came from the golf course world where he was you know big greens mowers, big greens mowers <laughs> moving stuff around and for sure you can get it done that way too for some people they're never going to want to go to kind of a more homeowner you know real mower but sure. for those who are interested in it i think it's a big time game changer from what it, what's out there right now and i also think you know if you're owning a real mower you're already a step ahead mm-hmm. whether it's a any of the brands we've talked about, that's still a victory. Um, yeah. You know, if you're owning a real mower, in my opinion, being a Southern guy again with Southern warm season grasses, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people just still don't realize that go low. You know, mowing low on a warm season grass is something that it thrives in. Yep. And if you have a, whether it's a McLean trimmer, true cut, swordman, greens mower, kudos to you because you're already on the right path. Mm-hmm. And that's just a victory in itself. Yeah. You know, I hope to not plug one way or the other, but, um, Moving away from that rotary, you know, retire the rotary. I love we that. We talk about that all the time. Retire yeah. the rotary. If you're passionate, you got to start there with a real mower, no matter what brand. Yeah, because it's it's pretty difficult to kind of succeed at a lower height with the rotary, just the way that it kind of thrashes things. It's yeah. So true, and it's you know, and you can see the difference, especially when you know you went through my neighborhood the other day, and you could almost see one house compared to another house who had a rotary versus a reel yep. on the same type of grass. Yep. It's kind of cool to see side by side. Yeah, and I was doing that in my yard and, and will continue too because I, yeah. I like keeping the, the backyard because of our different grasses and how much sun I get a little bit taller just to help survive where I'm at. But that's kind of too, I, I like to compare the cut and that was one thing that I noticed for sure is just the healthy, it looks healthier, especially even a couple days after mowing. Sure. Whereas usually you can kind of see the tips get a little bit frayed and stuff. Brown, that's a yeah. really good point. Yeah. yeah. So what are you guys doing coming up then? Um, you're going to be traveling around a little bit, taking the Swordman around to a few different places. You want to talk about that a little bit? So, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have, you talked about us being the exclusive dealer. Um, that comes with some limitations, being able to get in front of all the customers and show them. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of the advantages of being the only dealer and distributor is there's one point for Swordman to partner with us. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as communication, um, back and forth, and also with our relationship with RealWorks, it centralizes a lot of the service pieces of it when it comes to the real being grind mm-hmm. and sharpened. Um, but yeah, you know what we're going to be doing in the future is uh, trying to go to other cities because there's a lot of people that are asking to put their hands on one. Mm-hmm. Um, we have really two options for that. One, uh, we have customers now, as I mentioned, in 29 different states, and amazingly, in most cases, people that call and ask to see a a swordman are within 20 or 30 miles of actual swordman customers now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we're hooking up these folks with some of our existing customers who are more than happy to show their mower, um, let people play with it and demo it. Um, But in some cases, you know, these one at a timers um, doesn't always work as effectively as maybe going to a Birmingham or a Charlotte, um, a Dallas, uh, you know, Orlando. So we have about six cities that we'd like to try to uh, set up a date Sunday afternoon where we go there for two or three hours and have a crowd come out and try the mower out side by side and mm-hmm. at least get an experience for it. Um, we don't expect folks to always buy the mower, but I want people to know what's out there for the future. Right. Because at the end, it's a great fit for certain people. Yep. Um, and we want to just make sure those folks know that it's out there. Mm-hmm. So that's our goal. That's really, I think, just like any new product, it's just about the actual Exposure. knowing that it even exists. Sure. You know, so that's what I think was cool about the the demos and I think it has to, you have to be able to get your hands on it. I think that's, that's the actual factor that changes things. It does. I mean, yeah. yesterday was that, that demo, our demo day here and it was for me even kind of, I forgot, I was just texting a gentleman a minute ago. Sometimes you forget the differences between what you have and I've moved the Swordman now for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, both the Electra and the Edwin, which we can probably talk about a little bit of the Electra, which is really cool, really quiet. But um, I'd forgotten what it was like to use some of the other mowers because I hadn't done it in so long. Right. And yesterday when I was d- showing folks and watching folks for the first time um, mow with some of the models, not just Swordman, but you know the trimmers, the True Cuts, and the McLeans, I'd forgotten the aha moment I had. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of cool to rejuvenate myself to be like, you know what, there is a real big difference here. Yep. Um, and that kind of re-energized me, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I could definitely see that. I hadn't really seen a lot of the other mowers before personally. So I kind of got that other side of I've already had a Swordman, but I kind of got to see what the other ones were like, and it, it yeah, is geez. quite a quite a bit of a difference. Let's touch on a little bit of maybe about the Electra versus the Edwin. Those are basically the two models that they have, and yeah. just want to talk a little bit about those. Sure. Um, 
a lot of similarities, obviously, you know, both being a Swordman brand, um, real mower. Um, they both have the cartridge system, mm -hmm. interchangeable, same type of uh, cartridges available. They both have the rear drum drive, and really across the board, all the accessories are similar. Now, the big differences here are just basically you have a gas engine yep. um, versus a, a battery-operated electric two-motors engine. Mm -hmm. um, and they both have their advantages, in my personal opinion. You know, um, The gas engine, which is something that I thought I would always default to, being a guy in Georgia, you know, we look for the biggest engine we can find yep. <laughs> um, and look for gas. Um, so I thought it would be, you know, that would be my go-to. Um, and it has been for the past year and a half. And I think the cool thing about the gas engine is you know exactly what you're getting. Right. You know, it's an engine. Um, it's a brand new Briggs & Stratton engine that's super quiet, which amazingly we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, we standardized to that because of the California EPA rules and moved away from that Kawasaki so we can have one engine. That goes um, everywhere. That can yeah. go everywhere. So we want yeah. to have two different types of engines in house. Um, Briggs and Stratton's done a great job, and I think uh, you know when we saw it yesterday, it's got the quietness. Yeah, it's got enough power for a real mower to really make a difference with those cartridges. Mm -hmm. um, I like the gas because you know you can control your speed um, in a different way. Mm -hmm. So the fluctuation of the belt, um, and I also know what I'm getting. So you know for those people that aren't yet at the lithium battery stage. Uh, in their development or their their right, journey, right. which I've never had anything really lithium battery powered yet until this. Mm -hmm. um, the gas is a great way to go. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you're going to get, and it's a great mower with good power, really good power. Um, the Electra, uh, I think some of the unique things about the Electra is you know it's almost limitless to what they can do. It's a computer. Yep. You know it's got a, a computer board. So um, I think there's some things with reverse, forward, um, 16 different speed settings. Uh, very very simple. To maintain so right. unlike the gas you just have to maintain the reel yep and that could be shipped so you could technically live in nebraska idaho wherever you'd like um right and you can have a real mower that should last you a lifetime based off the battery life um the charging the lithium life pro four batteries and all you have to worry about is mailing off your reel yep no other real maintenance to it and it's got it has a belt that drives all of this these two engines so it's really neat yep yeah well, pretty simple system on that when we opened it up and you know, you just have the belt system driving the actual reel pretty much. Then everything else is electric motor driving everything else. So, yeah, very simple setup there. And then one cool thing about the Electra I will point out is that it has two different reel speeds. Um, so you have one reel, one speed for the reel when you're mowing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's cool, pretty cool because it, from a computer, spins as fast as your ground speed is. Right. So if your ground speed is only a half mile an hour, the reels are going to react to that exact speed. Yes. If you're going three miles an hour and running after it, um, your reel is going to follow that pattern as well. Mm -hmm. And then it has a second setting I call, I branded as hyperspeed. I'm not sure if Sorbonne approves of that yet, um, <laughs> but it makes sense to me. And hyperspeed is another setting for the reel that you can actually put in place when you want to use one of the ground engaging cartridges. So the Scarifier, the Verde Cutter, or the Rotary Brush. And I think you saw that yesterday. When you go into hyperspeed, it makes that reel yep. motor just take off. Mm -hmm. um, and that cartridge system really, for me personally, has been one of the things that I've loved the most about the mower. I mean, it's awesome to just be real mowing, but at the same time, not having to get other tools, going out to the store and renting something sure. maybe, or buying some specific tool. Like I have a dethatcher that I bought before this whole thing. And so it sits in the shed, you know, maybe twice a year I pull it out and use it. So sure. kind of cool that you can, can get a system there that works all together and, and that's how it kind of works out. So. And I think that's it, it's opened up my mind to doing more mm -hmm. with my yard because mm -hmm. it's convenient. Right. You know, it, it wouldn't be convenient for me to go and rent a dethatcher or a rotary brush yep. um, or a verticutter so, or buy one. So I think it's open, you know, just like you've opened up my mind when it comes to the chemical side of things. And Matt Martin's opened up my mind, a bunch of y'all. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten more involved um, with the actual chemistry side and the chemicals that can go into these yards uh it's kind of opened my mind to doing more for my yard yep so that's pretty cool i'm excited to do it i'm excited yeah. to get home and de-thatch or verde cut every day or whenever i can do it mm -hmm. so it's cool yeah and and uh i'm working on we were at uh, a house there working with the actual cartridges and i got some video of that to kind of see how you can use it to clean things up and yeah. yeah it's a cool system pretty neat yeah so is there anything else really that you wanted to touch on um with just our little chat here, anything else you can think of you wanted to, to talk about? or Yeah, I mean, one thing I'd like to say is it, I've been opened up to the whole new world of TLF. Um, lawn Forum. Yep. Lawn, the Lawn Forum. Yep. Podcasts. Um, a lot of these guys out there like you, they're doing just some really cool work. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, 
I'll be I'll be honest. Last night I started to watch Matt Martin's uh, live show. Yep. And uh, I had to go to bed, but this is sad. Don't tell Matt. Um, <laughs> but I woke up like at one a.m. because I was thirsty. I needed some water, and I actually went downstairs and got a cup of water and actually plugged back in and started watching this show again yeah. for another forty five minutes. Uh -huh. Um. You know, what y'all are doing is getting ex exciting me again. Mm -hmm. um, not that I've ever lost that love, but it's a whole new world outside of the machines. You know, I've been very passionate about the actual mowers themselves and, and the rollers and yep. the machines you use. But to be honest, you've opened up my eyes and a lot of these guys to, you know, actually applying my own fertilizers and my own yep. soil tests. And I talked to you about this before we jumped on that I'm kind of excited to get involved in that whole world and not really get involved from a selling, I mean, as a homeowner, because yep. that's what I am at the end of the day. Right. I'm just like you, know, you were originally and anybody else, I just happened to have a hobby that's become a business for us. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm, I get so excited about new ideas and learning new things that I can't wait to test some of these things out. Yeah, that's awesome. So I thank you guys. Really, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's really what it's become for us too is just, it was just, hey, we're out playing in our yards for a while and then made some videos about it and all of a sudden there's people like, people that showed up yesterday yesterday, and said to me, you know, I watch all your videos. They probably know more about my videos than I do. I mean, so. you, had, you had people driving multiple states. I, I mean, I have to be honest, I was really jealous and really impressed that, uh, you know, a celebrity, people were coming in and I introduced myself to one guy and he said, yeah, I'm here to see Ryan. I was yeah. like, well, good to have you, buddy. But yeah. it was really cool. And that's really neat what you've done. So that's it, it is. It's very humbling for me. Uh, just, yeah, I just started creating videos and all of a sudden there's a community there. But that's that's really been the most fun or the fun part about it, I guess, sure. is just meeting all these people. I mean, I'm traveling now, meeting you, all these other people that I never would have met before. So it's great. Great people too. Yep. You know, they're all solid the earth, good people that are share the same passion or as my wife calls it, my, my same therapy. Yep. You know, getting out there and just having my own world. So exactly. It's cool. Well thanks so much, Lee, again for letting me hang out this weekend and uh being at the event and all that stuff, sitting down here with me to chat a little bit. So Appreciate it very much. And oh, thank you. I hope you guys had fun riding around the van. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure that I get a little, some photos there of that van. So you guys know what we're talking about, oh, but it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Good ride.